Hello again, I am Blonty in Taipei, Taiwan. And as promised, I've come to the uh, park near my hotel for a bit of Pokemon Go action. I've popped an incense, gone for a bit of a wander and collecting a few Pokemon so far. Let me take you through. I mean, I don't really have my, my the, the, the usual setup I have for recording Pokemon Go walks, so this won't be nearly as good as quality, uh, technically, as my other videos. But at least it's in a uh, exotic location. And uh, let me just pop this Pokestop right here, get some balls. <laughs> so let's go, let's see what we find. I'm hoping to find a far-fetched, obviously, far-fetched Asian exclusive uh, Pokemon. Who knows when I'm going to be back in Asia to try and get one. But, uh, ooh, just popped a Goldeen. Let's get to it. And while I wander and hunt, I'd like to also show you little snippets of my Taiwan experience I enjoyed as a guest of MSI, who brought me here in the first place to show off their new badass gaming laptops. And if you haven't seen that video yet, please go ahead and check it out. It's pretty cool stuff. I was slightly concerned for my life over the rather relaxed approach to electrical safety my hotel seemed to have, especially considering I've had a bad habit of electrocuting myself throughout my life. Seven severe shocks in my life so far. <laughs> my view of the parking sign was uninspiring, but I was at least directly over a 7-Eleven, so I was never short of a snack or a beer. I did dig that. I'll take that convenience over a nice view any day. Alrighty, time for some capsule toy fun. I love these things. Spotted these at the 7-Eleven under my hotel. Not nearly as common here in Taipei as they are in Tokyo, of course, but still, spotted one, had to do it. Unfortunately, the Gundam one that I wanted was utterly empty. Some collector had apparently been by and cleaned it out. I swear this was half full the last time I was down here. Anyway, with the choices of dogs and kitchen appliances that look like cats or personified snacks, you guessed it, I chose snacks. Doi. The machine was hungry for 60 Taiwan dollars, which is about $2.40 in Aussie cash, or just under $2 American. Pretty pricey for a capsule toy by Japanese standards, if I remember correctly, but oh well, it's spare change anyway. I was keeping it aside exactly for this purpose. So let's see what we got. It's a pink cream puff thingy with an expression that one could only describe as the anticipation of numbing inevitability. <laughs> I have no idea what its little speech bubble says. Are there any cunning multilinguists out there in the comment section that could help me out on that? <laughs> I put it on my backpack. It's still there. It makes me smile. This is about two dollars worth of supposedly chocolate enhanced snack bread. It's not bad. I mean, it's not good, but I ate all four of the things, so <laughs> must be not bad. Heading for the National Palace Museum, the largest store of some of the most stunningly magnificent, awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping, breathtakingly beautiful Chinese art and craft in the world. 
unfortunately they don't allow cameras inside so I can't actually show you any of the stuff so achingly magnificent I was genuinely emotionally moved by the unceasingly enchanting and spectacular beauty of it all and the skill of the artisans. Seriously, if you ever come to Taipei, go to the National Palace Museum. Carve off half a day for it, because I was there for barely an hour, I think, and I felt cheated out of seeing most of it. But I did at least get a friggin' selfie outside, so... Yay. <laughs> We were also treated to a walking tour through the streets to get a real feel of regular Taipei life. Those fires you see, despite it being a cripplingly hot day, it's a spiritual observance, a method of symbolic sacrifice to the ghosts of the ancestors at this time of year. Broadly translated, it's Ghost Month, burning symbolic money, leaving offerings of food and drink, all for the ghosts of dead loved ones who can visit our world at this time. It's a bit like the pagan basis of what we now call Halloween, where it's said that the veil between this world and the spirit world is at its thinnest, so the ghosts can come visiting. This wharf, whose name I won't attempt pronunciation of, as I've forgotten how to do it properly already, despite the very helpful tour guide's assistance in teaching me how to say it properly. Sorry, slipped out of my brain already. It's a long way from being the prettiest waterfront I've seen in the world, but it is at least rich with local history, and in fact has become quite a draw for certain locals lately, as it's a huge Pokemon Go hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> In the few minutes we spent there, even I caught well over a dozen Pokemon, one right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. It was amazing. It's a bit embarrassing, and please don't tell her, but I had a bit of a crush on one of our guides. She was super cute. On the walking tour, we were led to a very small but very popular local temple. Famous for two main reasons. One is that the local deity who resides within, whose first job is guardian of the city. Kind of like a spiritual mayor, if you will. Local people and business owners come and pray for good fortune in their dealings. But he's also known as a bit of a love god. Young people, women especially I'm told, come here to pray and make offerings in the hopes of finding Mr. Right and a good man worth marrying. It was also a very beautiful, if crowded, temple in its own right. I loved it. Down the street, a hop, skip and a jump from my hotel, we found a restaurant called Dream of Hobbiton, which was, as you may have guessed, a Lord of the Rings theme. I didn't actually get a chance to drink or dine there, but it seems, given the odd choices of slightly posh pirate and Iron Man, and the staff in shorts, they didn't quite take the theme as seriously as you may have hoped. Still, fun find. Well, I'm not having crazy amounts of luck. Certainly no far-fetched yet. Got a diglet, which uh, I think it's only the second one I've ever managed to get. Not that common around my area at home, I guess. Uh, a couple more horsies, that's always handy, but mostly it's just weedles and other common stuff and uh, star you here and there. Whoop. What have we got here? I also found God while I was in Taiwan. He lives right there, apparently. Arrogant bugger put his name right in the building. <laughs> Thank you. 
and what trip to Taipei is complete without a visit to the most famous modern landmark they have, Taipei 101. And from the crowded and noisy observation deck, you can get a 360 degree utterly uninterrupted view of Taipei. It was magnificent. It was a bit hazy when we went, so the images I got were less than I'd hoped for. I also wish we could have gone at night for an even more spectacular show, but still, an unforgettable view as the bustling city bleeds into the softly rolling green hills that border it. The outdoor observation deck, sadly roped off to less than a quarter of the 360 degree view, was a bit pointless at this time of day, I have to admit the glare from the late afternoon sun obliterated any chance I had of pretty images and video, but I bet it looks amazing an hour later at sunset though. And still in Taipei 101, we were then treated to a stunningly fancy meal in a private dining room. On the way in, something told me I should probably expect a meal filled with lots of delicious and quite fresh seafood. And the meal was spectacular, one of the best dining experiences I've had in my life. And it was the best sushi I've had outside of Tokyo. And we got real wasabi too, of course. Always a joy. The local Taipei beer now counts among my favorites, and I even got some very delightful single malt whiskey to slowly savor. Yummy. Another Taipei specialty, mango shaved ice from a locally famous place called Ice Monster. And their mango ice is apparently considered something of a delicacy. The locals I ate with seemed pretty surprised to hear that mangoes are quite easy to come by anywhere in Australia. I've never had mango and shaved ice form though, and as simple as it is, it was amazingly yummy and a utterly perfect foil for the Taipei heat. You may have also noticed the extraordinarily generous portions we were given. I was in fact the only one of our group who managed to empty his bowl. We also visited another shaved ice place the next day. I got mango ice again, this time though with banana. A slightly less ambitious serving size at this place, and still very delicious and still perfect for the brutally hot evening we were suffering through. This place also had a weird roulette slash western horoscope fortune gambling device thingy on every table. In goes 10 Taiwan dollars, about 40 cents Australian, out comes a rather detailed fortune. I couldn't read it of course, but my host did for me. It seems I'm not afraid of new experiences, like throwing 10 Taiwan dollars at a weird gambling device sitting on a table I had no idea what it did. I love trying new things, I listen more than I talk, and some other stuff I can't quite remember anymore, but as fortunes went it was actually surprisingly accurate, which was cute. And our last meal in Taipei was at a German themed restaurant. I didn't take much video at all here so I've got not much to show you, but it was delicious. And by the way it was not especially German, but the serving staff were dressed to German theme and if you've never seen a Taiwanese girl in Lederhosen, well you're missing out. It may just have been the most adorable thing I've seen in quite some time. <laughs> That's the end of my incense. So, not a disastrous haul, but not what I was hoping for. I've got a little bit of time left. I don't have any incenses left, but I might stick around at the back a little while longer. Just try and find myself a uh, far-fetched. I mean, they're rare, and I'm told parks are the place to find them, and Asia is the place to find parks to find them in. So fingers crossed. 
But uh, otherwise, yeah, leveled up a bit, I guess. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I'll catch you next time.